translate or dilate to make solids. We're going to talk about pancakes that are 2D and cakes that are 3D. And we're going to dilate a solid in 9.7C. We have 14 previous videos for Chapter 9 that you can go to the description and look in the geometry playlist if you've become lost or confused. When a figure is translated on a coordinate plane, the vertices are moved in two directions, left to right and up and down. We talked about translations back in 9.2a. When a figure is translated through space, space is three-dimensional, so the vertices move in three directions, left or right, up or down, and forward or backward. An isometric projection gives a video game a 3D effect by rotating the visuals and by items drawn on the screen that use angles of perspective. If you've ever played with a game controller on a PS3 or a game deck, the different axes are how it detects its area in space. If you look at a coordinate plane, the x-axis measures left and right, and the y-axis measures up and down. When a z-coordinate is added, you can find a point in 3D space, forward or backward. So x and y measure on a 2D plane, while z measures depth in 3D. We can translate a 2D figure through space to create a model of a 3D figure. Translating this triangle up 6, each lateral face is a rectangle. And the solid formed by connecting the vertices is a triangular prism. So we went from a 2D pancake of a triangle to a 3D cake of a triangular prism. We can use isometric paper or dot paper to create a 2D representation of a 3D figure. Engineers use isometric drawings to show 3D diagrams on 2D paper. We can translate the triangle diagonally up or down or to the right or left and horizontally or vertically. The line segments that connect the vertices are parallel to each other and congruent to each other. When we translate a triangle in a direction that isn't perpendicular to the plane containing the triangle, so this is not perpendicular, this is skewed, isn't it? The solid made is an oblique triangular prism, and each of its lateral faces is a parallelogram. We went from our 2D pancake triangle to a 3D cake oblique triangular prism. We can translate a square to draw a rectangular prism by connecting the corresponding vertices, and if all the sides were congruent, it would make a cube. So we went from a 2D square right here for our pancake to a 3D rectangular prism for our cake. Or, if they're all congruent sides, we have a 3D cake cube. A circular base that is translated up or down will form a cylinder when the top and bottom are connected. And if the direction isn't perpendicular to the plane, we'd make an oblique cylinder. So here's our oblique one that's not perpendicular to this plane. And here we have our cylinder. What if we dilated and did a reduction of this circle and made it smaller and translated it up and then did it again? We could connect the sides and make a cone. Take a look at this diagram here. The blue square was translated upward and dilated by a negative scale factor. And the resulting image would be the pink square in the middle here. And if we did it again, we'd make this green square, this little one on top. And we could translate up and dilate exponentially smaller and smaller towards the center of dilation to form a square pyramid. We can translate a solid, like a triangular prism, by translating all the vertices by the length of the translation vector. So here's our vector. We're going to go negative 10 for x. It's parallel to the x-axis. That means whatever the x value is, we're going to subtract 10, and we're going to keep y as it is. So if a is at 2 for x, 6 for y, we're going to do 2 minus 10 to get a negative 8 
for x, and then 6 will stay the same. We do it for each of the vertices, and it'll translate to this triangular prism with the x values negative 10 from the pre-image. If we dilate or enlarge, make an enlargement, a rectangular prism with a scale factor of 4 that starts with a 3 centimeter height, a 5 centimeter length, and a 2 centimeter width, what would be the new area and volume? Well, when a solid is enlarged by a scale factor k, its surface area increases by a factor of k squared, and its volume increases by a factor of k cubed. So the first thing we do is find the current area and volume. If you look here, I've got them color-coded. We have, this is a net of a rectangular prism. It would look like this. We could actually fold it on the dotted lines and tape it together to make a rectangular prism. So this is unfolded. We have a front and a back. We have a top and a bottom. And we have a left and right end to our prism. So if we've got three for height and five for length, we've got two of these green ones, a back and a front. So that's going to be two times the length times the height. That's two times five times three. We've got a top and a bottom. And the width was two, so this is a two. And our length is a five, so we're going to do two times the length times the width, or two times five times two. Then we've got our ends. The width is a two and the height is a three, so we've got two times three twice. So we have 2 times 2 times 3. This makes 30. This makes 20. This makes 12. We add them up and get 62 centimeters squared. That's our surface area. For the volume, we do length times width times height for a rectangular prism, which would be 5 times 2 times 3, which gives us 30 centimeters cubed. Now we have our current surface area and our current volume. We can apply that scale factor squared or cubed. Our scale factor k is 4. We dilated it by 4. And our dilated surface area is going to be k squared. And since that's a 4, it's going to be 4 squared. So we multiply 62 times 4 squared, which would be 62 times 16. We get a total surface area of 992 centimeters squared. For the dilated volume, we have to do k cubed. So that's 4 cubed. That's a 64. We do the 30 times 64 and get 1,920 centimeters cubed. So that's it for chapter 9. We're going to move on to chapter 10 and talk first about some literal, literal equations. And then we're going to talk about area. So for those of you who are dis discussing cakes and pancakes in geometry, which I think they use in the Carnegie books, now you know what they are. And you know about 2D and 3D and translation and even dilation. Don't forget to hit the like button for me. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you can let the ads run, that also helps me out because that's how I make my living. I'll see you next time. Bye.